this is Bible Hour, Violet's Corner, with your host and author, Violet Laverne Williams. My dialogue for this month of August of 2023, number one, Bible Hour, the Young Leaders Activity Corner, the activity for the kids for August of 2023. Number two, the attachment of the video for the activities for the children of what they will be doing. Number three, Bible Hour, the monthly scripture verse for this month is coming from First Timothy, 6th chapter, 12th verse, the New Testament. Fourth is the test video of the reading from First Timothy, 6th chap six chapter, 12th verse, from the author. Number five, Bible Hour, the author's viewpoint for this month of August 2023. The topics discussed is one, senior citizens being respected. Number two, those with medical conditions being respected. The next one is an invitation to receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. And last but not least, subscribe if you like these vlogs. I pray that you be blessed. Also pray that this information is informative. God bless you. Be blessed. Young Leaders Activity Corner for August of 2023, Activity 8. Be blessed. Bible Hour, the Young Leaders Activity Corner, August of 2023, Activity 8. Hi kids, well we are into the 8th month of the new year 2023. Your activity for this month is 1. Prayer again for this month. Some of you are starting back to school this month. I pray that you had a fun summer, that some of you were able to get to vacation Bible school. I remember growing myself as a child. Not only did we learn some more about the Bible, but we also had some fun activities also that we did with the other kids in vacation Bible school. Some go on outings. A, prayer to God about some things regarding school that you need help with, maybe some subjects. B, or maybe a problem you have been having with another student. Bring all this before God in prayer. C, ask for guidance. Two, continue to read your Bibles. At least a scripture or a chapter more. We need the word in our hearts. We want to hear from the Holy Spirit. I pray you have a great start back to school. Don't forget some tips I've given you and help with subjects and classwork. Remember to read the instructions before you begin. Materials needed, Bible, notebook or computer, or sheet of writing paper, pen or pencil. I believe that I'm going to keep this website up because you can also go on this website for references regarding Bibles and study material for your Christian study, even if I don't continue to put the activities up on this website. Some scripture verses below for those of you who want to receive Jesus to your life as your Lord and Savior or a family member or friend. Romans 10 chapter, 9 through 12 verse, or John 3rd chapter, 16 verse, both these books in the New Testament. And you can also listen to the audio about salvation, receiving Jesus into your life below on the website at https colon slash slash b-o-w-i-l-a dot website dot com slash b-h dash Bible Corner. Or on the YouTube channel, this is Bible Hour, Bible's Corner, 
videos of Christian Richmond storytelling in my vlog. I hope the Lord for you and your family to be blessed, healthy, safe, and prosperous in the year 2023. I pray that God keeps his loving arms around all of the children all over the world and keep their fence around them, protecting them and keeping them out of harm's way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. See you next time, September 2023, Bible Avenue Needs Activity Corner on this YouTube channel. This is Bible Hour Father's Corner. Bible Hour, the monthly scripture verse for August of 2023, coming from 1 Timothy 6, chapter 12, verse in New Testament. Fighting the good fight of faith. God bless. Bible out the month of scripture verse August of 2023. We as born again Christians who have received Jesus into our lives as our Lord and Savior, let's continue to persevere and follow Jesus no matter what. No problem, situation, or circumstance is too hard that God can fix or resolve it. No sickness or disease too hard that Jesus can heal it. This is what I believe and continue to fight the good fight of faith. Which the monthly scripture verse is for this month. Fighting the good fight of faith as believers. Wait on the Lord. My faith and works. I know to some my life might not show it at this time. But I still believe who God is. Who Jesus is. And I believe who the Holy Spirit is. And besides. In Him we live and move and have our being. Not in man. Acts 17, chapter 28, verse in the New Testament. So I will press on as long as I am here on this earth. Prayer helps for healing, etc. It's our belief and faith and waiting on the Lord. Sometimes you feel like you're by yourself, but you're not. When you got God in your life, that's a whole lot. And you can make it through because He is all powerful. And I see and know Him as all powerful it's also good to have christians that you can call and pray with talk with who also believe and have faith in the word of god and the lord we are not in this alone the father the son and the holy spirit is one focusing on him praying for other born again christians ourselves our families and others the most descriptive verse for this month is coming from 1 Peter, sorry, 1 Timothy, 6th chapter, 12th verse. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses so let's continue as christians to continue to fight the good fight of faith the scriptures verse is coming from biblehub.com so scripture verse below for those of you who want to receive jesus into your life as your lord and savior or a family member or friend romans 10th chapter 9 through the 12th verse of john Third chapter 16 verse both books of New Testament and you can also listen to the order you're about salvation receiving Jesus to your life below on the website at https colon slash slash b-o-w-i-l-a dot website dot com slash b-h dash follow corner or on the YouTube channel https colon slash slash youtube dot com slash at Christian Enrichment Story T E 1334 my hope in the Lord is for you and your families to be blessed, healthy, prosperous, and safe New Year 2023. I pray that God keep you in peace. You and your families, I pray that you get to know who God is, His unconditional love, making His Son Jesus part of your life today. We can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens us. Philippians 4. Chapter 13, verse from the New Testament. 
God's strength. We need it, not in our strength. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. See you next time, September 2023, for Bible Hour, the monthly scripture verse on this YouTube channel. This is Bible Hour, Violet's Corner. Be blessed. Bible Hour, the author's viewpoint, August of 2023. Topics, senior citizens being respected, those with different medical conditions being respected. Some time ago, I mentioned some things in regard to respecting senior citizens. Well, I am mentioning this again because Apparently, some need to be reminded. Some think they know everything and nobody else knows nothing. Either because of the title they hold, etc., or their high status, etc. I am a senior citizen, an elderly African American Christian woman. I'm recognized with some because you are of senior citizen age maybe in your 60s or older, you can't comprehend, you don't understand. Stop all this. This is ignorance and you look ignorant when you treat some senior citizens like this and they know very well what you are talking about. what you are what you are talking about I had to fix that even might even be more knowledgeable of the subject that you are discussing than you you look foolish, don't embarrass yourself. If I don't know something, I will let you know that I don't know or understand what you are saying. If I don't know something, I will let you know that I don't know or understand what you are saying. It's hard to repeat that. We all don't know everything. I don't care what your title or status is. Then some of us want to talk to senior citizens like they are children and treat them like children. It's one thing when a senior citizen has some health problems and maybe lost some memory or need to be taken care of. Even then, treat them with some dignity. They were here before you were born especially if you're younger than they are. Don't just assume they don't know what you are saying and just ignore them or disrespect them without even listening to them or their response. If you are a professional, especially in the medical field, you ought to know better. Some of you have these medical degrees in healthcare and you just treat some of your patients as if you have no training. Some need some training how to talk to their patients, how to handle certain health situations because some act like they don't know and talk like they don't know. And to be truthful, neglectful of their patients and you are around all sorts of body fluids from patients and everything else because that's part of you being a doctor. And the way some of you treat patients, you would think that you would be a professional enough to understand about a patient's body fluids and what the patient has to deal with. And yet some of you act just like someone who has no understanding about medical conditions of some patients. Why are you even in the medical field? I thank God for doctors, nurses, surgeons, all in the health care field, especially those who care about the patient's well-being. 
if that patient cares, if that patient lives or dies, and the health care they can provide. Those that don't, and just in it for the money, you should really find another line of work. This is serious. If you are running late or too many patients, you can't take your frustration out on the patient. The patient's able to see it. Rushing through paperwork provided to you. Don't call a surgery a diagnosis. The diagnosis is first. Then determines if there is to be surgery or not. Just don't dismiss a patient's understanding of what you are saying and being aggressive and controlling. The patient comes to you because you know how to tell them about what's going on with the condition they have, your expertise in the area. You're doing things or saying things, then they, then they get angry because of your attitude. Maybe you need a vacation or a few days off. Whatever your problem, you shouldn't bring it to the patient because that could make their health problem worse depending on what it is. Something else about us as senior citizens, because you are a senior citizen, something you should sit down. No, I'm not sitting down and I'm still in my right mind, a sound mind, a mind of Christ. Some of you are still doing some of the same things I've been through trying. I've been through trying to mess with my job and misdiagnose. I stand in the word of God that I'm healed mentally over 35 or more years ago when the doctors weren't able to help me, a testimony, and healed from cancer twice, a testimony. I have proof. Of course the devil tried to take you back, but I wouldn't let him as soon as I recognized what was going on. The devil was behind me, and he's already under our feet as born-again Christians. He is a defeated foe. He has no power over us, and no, and I know that I have the authority to use Jesus' name, and I have the victory over him. These are testimonies. This we should be talking about, not some trying to shame people of a medical condition they may have. I can tell you right now, some surgeries cannot be reversed. Now, I don't have to mention this because some things are just nobody else's business, but this person going through it and God and their family, and they want their family to know. Some of us, I remember as a Christian being in ministry at a church in another state, Sometimes we mention things about Christians to others. I don't believe we should mention to others. Even some medical conditions should be kept between that Christian and the, that family and something. Some things about a person's marriage should be between that married couple. unless they want to mention it. It doesn't give anybody else the right to mention people's. Medical conditions to the public without them agreeing to it. It was mentioned about this Christian in the church, his medical condition, and I have the same medical condition. I didn't say anything about me or that I had the same medical condition because it was nobody's business. But that Christian, but, but between that Christian and God. When we talk about one person, we talk about a whole lot of people that have the same medical condition who are living normal lives, working, and in ministry. How dare any of us call any one of God's children unclean? Wouldn't have known about this Christian if no one had mentioned it. Wouldn't have known about this other person's work if no one had mentioned it to me. The only thing that's unclean is the ones who try to dirty up those with their mouths. 
I sat next to people who needed deodorant, didn't wash their hands after they used the bathroom, but dressed like they came out of a magazine. Do we put them on national television or, or in the public to try to humiliate them? No, I am saying this as nicely as I can, and I hope in any way that I am not pleasing in God's eyes for saying this. But sometimes you just get tired of hearing in the church. Unfortunately, Christians being ostracized, and this shouldn't be. I have worked in ministry, even after my surgery. Some of us need to go and study the Word, because this is definitely not of God, to call His children unclean and try to ostracize them. And I just look at you and continue to be about, and continue about God's business, like I was, and still do, being in the body of Christ, because you definitely can't, know the word of God or to think that you are better than another Christian because of a medical condition they have. Some of you exaggerate things, try to make it more than what it is. Like I said before with me, this has started some years ago in the late 80s or 90s before I had any surgery. First it was the past gas. I just laughed. Because Sometimes it's somebody else and they will say it's you just to be mean. Some of us need to really be educated about life and some who are in the medical field. Maybe you shouldn't be there if you can't tolerate the smell of bed pans, etc. All body fluids from a patient. And some just need to grow up. The important thing is when they sow us for price and yet even some Christians have to deal with this from the church and the public. I never really talked about the passing gas scene because I knew it wasn't me at the time some of them said it, and I, and then I just ignored the silliness. Some of us just need to grow up, please. And I can tell you right now, nobody on this earth will be able to shame me or any surgery I've had on my body. I can say I might have, have should have taken care of my health a little bit better, but this I know. It is no hindrance to me doing the will of God as long as you can function and do what you need to do for God and in your life and for others. Thank the Lord for it. Hallelujah. Because it could have been a fatality. So I thank God for everything he's done. And that's also why I'm still living. And that is also why I would never leave God. I would be about his business. I am free in the Lord and of the sweet fragrance of God. That's where I'm at. This present time in my Christian walk with God and forget the other nonsense and continue to be about my father's business, doing the work of the Lord and being in the house of worship. When I'm not in the house of worship, then I am keeping up with what God is saying to the church online. But I will continue to serve God and be about his business as I have been in all these years. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4, 13, as born again Christians. We are all human and made in the image of God. And some have received his son, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior. Thank God that he is not like this with man. Hallelujah. All of this keep trying to humiliate people is just nonsense. You think you're going to try to break that person? you really hurting yourself as a child of the Most High God. I can't say that when this first started, I wasn't upset because I was. I always try to look like, always try to look nice and still try to. You know, you got your envy and jealous people, the devil working through them, but he has already been defeated, making the devil mad, continue to be about my father's business. 
telling someone about the good news, the goodness of God and his unconditional love. But through God, I was able to get through it to do what he called me to do. So let's respect our senior citizens and not talk to them as if they don't understand because you then insult the intelligence and then you won't look too good in front of that senior citizen. You will look foolish and ignorant. If I don't understand something, I will let you know. But don't assume already I won't understand what you are saying because I am of senior citizen age. There are a lot of senior citizens in leadership positions who are doing a better job than some younger than them. Stop trying to put us all in a box. We are all different, even as senior citizens. I am not sitting down because that is not who I am, who gave, who made, who gave me He who made me, God made me, because that's not who I am. I had to be doing something, keeping God the head of my life. Some of us are like that. Some of us are traveling. Some are just enjoying the retirement. I like working also, so I write and I do art. This is who I am. If God wants to change that, then he can. After all, I am his property. I don't even own my own self. I wish me serve a loving and forgiving God. Besides, everything on this earth is temporary. It's not permanent. Only the word of God and our salvation, eternal life. With the Lord not being judgmental of the younger ones, but some of our younger ones could do a little bit more in their lives. They have more opportunities. Don't waste your lives, young people, on doing nothing. You have a lot to offer. Be who you are, how God made you, your uniqueness, your talents, gifts God gave you, develop them. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. When the young or the when the young or the older do this, you put pressure on yourself, then some become stressed, depressed, etc. Don't do that to yourself. I know some at their senior sister age start to have some health problems as far as minerals, etc. Praying for them. We can't expect to live forever. We all would go into old age if you live to be in our senior citizen is. So thank God and have stamina, strength that he has given us to keep going for God, then why not? Just some things I believe I need to point out as a Christian woman, the elderly. Be blessed, keep safe, and be in peace, you and your families. By the author, Ballard Laverne, Williams. This is an invitation to invite Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. Some scriptures on salvation, Romans 10, chapter 9 through the 10th verse. And John 3, chapter 16, verse, both these books in the New Testament. I'm going to read Romans 10, chapter 9 through the 10th verse. But if thou wilt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart one believes the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So if you believe that God raised up Jesus from the dead in three days, that Jesus died for your sins, you will be washed. You will be saved and washed of your sins. Be blessed. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. September of 2023. For this 
is Bible, Bible's Corner. Be blessed.